On this channel, I've showcased quite a few Pokemon makes, but today I want to answer one question. Can I make merch better than the Pokemon company itself? So today I'll be showing off four different makes I've made throughout 2022 and put it head to head against the very best merch that the Pokemon company has put out. So how will I beat the biggest money-making IP owners of all time? With gimmicks. Lots of gimmicks. First up, we have my Hologram Spiritomb. I won't go into detail about this because there are a few other videos I've already made on it, but it has an odd keystone base and a hologram LED fan that spins around to give it a glowy, incorporeal look. And it can either be the classic sprite or its more modern 3D iteration. Uh, this might be a good time to mention that there are still four more of these in stock at my Big Cartel page, which you can find at BigRigCreates.com. Wink! Anyways, let's see how it stacks up to the competition. All right, so this is how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be looking at the site called PokeVault, which basically has a database of all of the current Pokemon merch. In addition, I'll also be looking at Google Images for anything that this site doesn't have. If I find anything better than what I made, the Pokemon company gets a point. But if I don't, I get the point. All right, starting off, we have a keychain. Who cares? It doesn't even have three dimensions. Okay, there's a little minifigure here and it's a bit translucent. That's pretty cool. Oh. That's not cool. Okay, there's a plushie here as well, and that's pretty cute, but uh, if that got anywhere near my hologram fan, it would be absolutely ripped to shreds. So yeah, first point goes to me. Next up, after seeing the new trailers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and seeing the new terrestrializing gimmick, I knew that I wanted to make the very first terrestrialized Pokemon in real life. So I chose Quaxily and its ridiculous water crown. Why Quaxily? I've always been a sucker for the water type starters. So I took an existing Quaxily model from the internet. But to give it that gem-like geography, I took it into Blender and reduced the polygon count. Then bringing it into Mesh Mixer, I separated the hat-looking hair from the rest of the body. And yes, the caved-in looking skull over here looks a bit freaky, but trust me, I have big plans here. Now all there was left to do was model the crown portion. And I, uh, I did some things I was not proud of. I modified a crown model to make it more blobby. I put some trumpet models together for this middle portion. The jewel face is just a modified rupee model from Zelda. And for the splashy parts, I decapitated a shuckle because I don't model from scratch. I'm sorry, shuckle fans, I'm really so- And yes, to make things worse, the top row is a bunch of crystals coming out of their faces. Sometimes I think I shouldn't be showing how the sausage is made. But moving past my immoral modeling, all I had to do was print everything out. I'm using leftover clear blue PLA from Atomic Filament from the shiny Spiritomb prints for all the blue parts, and using clear PETG I had sitting around for the body. For the crown, I noticed that there were two different shades of blue, so I used custom infill areas so certain parts would be a deeper shade than the rest. Just have to paint on a bill here and things are looking all shiny and good. But there's still some room for some extra shine. I had the idea of covering everything in this translucent sticker sheet because I thought it'd be cool to give it the same look as some of the Pokemon cards I had growing up as a kid. But this was a stupid idea because this was clearly only meant for flat surfaces. So instead, I took inspiration from a project I did earlier this year. The Origin Ball from Legends Arceus. That's right, it's the ball from the very end of the game that's just kind of there for plot convenience, but I thought it looked pretty dang cool. Now, if you search today on Yegi, you can see plenty of origin balls that exist from people who modeled it, but when I started this project back in the day, none of these existed. So as I started from scratch, I looked to Bulbapedia and found out that this isn't a ball. This is actually a uh, truncated isosahedron, isosahedron, and it is used in the cell transitive hyperbolic space filling tessellation. The bi-truncated order five dodecahedral honeycomb. Oh, it's also the shape of a soccer ball. Okay, that one makes sense to me. So I hollowed out that shape in Tinkercad and heavily modified my existing Pokeball metal parts from last year and printed the whole thing out. I tried multiple times to fit a hinge on this thing, but it, 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 just, it just didn't work and I don't want to talk about it. Regardless, I had an idea to make things extra shiny. So I had to get a bit extra fancy. See, I have this kit here to make epoxy resin. And yes, you do have to take some safety precautions, but after mixing part A and part B evenly, I coated both halves of the red soccer ball. After a few days of curing, 
Ah, look at that, it's so shiny. Now this Origin Ball has some cool extra features as well. First, I printed out a little Switch game holder so it could have some actual functionality. I also have this little device and it can do some pretty cool tricks. Using some reverberation magic technology, it essentially vibrates water at a specific frequency that turns water into mist. I really wanted to emulate how Pokeballs in this game emit steam, but it eh, kind of was half successful last time. So was this new idea an improvement? Well, the concept worked really well with the ball while it was open as long as the surface was water resistant, but nothing was really coming out of the top when it was closed. At least when I opened the ball back up, a huge puff of steam dissipated everywhere, so that was cool, but the whole thing was still kind of a wet mess. The jury is still out on whether this was a success. Now, I also had the idea to fire out some mini projectiles out of the ball using some matches as explosives, but I live downtown in a city, so I didn't really want to ruffle any feathers with my neighbors. And knowing me, I probably would have found a way to just melt the whole project with all the fire involved. So yeah, I think I'll just let it hold Switch games for the time being. All right, Pokemon Company, you had a whole year to release some merch for the Origin Ball. Let's see what you got. What is this thing? Pokemon Center 2022 Hisui Region Origin Ball Hisui Days Magnet Number no. 6. So it's a magnet. Cool. Honestly, I can't seem to find any other merch for this, so even though my Origin Ball had some issues, I still think the point goes to me by default. Anyways, back to Quaxily. I'm going to be using the same resin I did for the Origin Ball. And look at that glisten. Honestly, looks as delicious as one of those candy ring pops. It did not taste as delicious as one of those candy ring pops. Now, time to glue everything together and look at that, wait a second. I think I screwed something up here. Yeah, time to pluck these eyes out. Hey, still isn't the least ethical thing I've done in this video. Okay, much better. Now I need a way to easily attach and detach Quaxily's hair. I thought of a few different ways, but in the end, I went with magnets. What inspired me to use magnets? Well, it was none other than the Magnezone project I was working on. Magnezone's a pretty cool looking Pokemon. It's got the whole UFO thing going on, and it's got magnets. W what more could you possibly want? So how would I go about bringing this magnet rising Pokemon into the real world? Well, with, with magnets, of course. If you're a keen viewer to my channel, and if you're not at this point, subscription buttons down there, I got more of this kind of stuff coming. You might have seen the Scarab project from Moon Knight that I made. It uses this magnet that levitates above this platform that has electromagnets inside that adjust to balance this puck in the air. So all I needed to do was hollow out this Magnezone model to make it as light as possible, while also being able to hold the puck inside. After printing everything out, I used a combination of a few metallic paints, and it was looking pretty good. The magnets don't end here though, because all these attachments are held together by magnets. Even the two halves of Magnezone are held together by magnets. But now when I place Magnezone on this platform in a very specific way, it can levitate. Alright, what have they been cooking up for Magnezone? Another keychain? As I said, if it's not even in the third dimension, it's not gonna cut it. We got a plushie, a blue plushie, and a Magnezone Pokemon Monster Collection figure Takara Tomy 2008 Toy Japan H09 1.3 inches for 50 bucks? Well, for that amount of money, I'd hope it at least flowed in his hand. I just realized that the Origin Ball has a magnet and Magnezone doesn't have a magnet. Yeah, definitely disqualified for not having a magnet. All right, finally, one more time, back to Quaxily. Now that I can actually remove and reattach its hair, let me show you why that's important. As you can see in the trailer, terrestrialized Pokemon don't only reflect light, but they emit light as well. So Quaxily was hollowed out so it could hold electronics. Originally, there was a different board that was supposed to go in here, but I had to swap it out for this Pipico, but it was too big. Thankfully, you can snip off a third of the board and it barely loses any functionality. I soldered together a bunch of these individual LEDs, did a bit of coating, and when you plug in a power source into the back of Quaxily's head, it's glow tap. And using the simple push button, you can even swap between modes in both white and aqua blue. 
There's standard light mode, a shimmer mode, a glow mode, and most importantly, an RGB mode. Okay, I, I think it's time for the final comparison. All right, let's finish this. See if the Pokemon company can't put one up on the board. These are some pretty cute plushies, I guess. Yeah, pretty cute. Oh, what is this? What, what is this? It's got flapping action. Competition just got a bit more steep. But I'll tell you what, this ain't no party duck. Point to me. That's right, that's a 4-0. Clean sweep. I am better than you, Pokemon Company. You might have some cool stuff, but my Pokemon, they're just built differently. I mean, are you all just out of ideas? Or right. I'm gonna have to take that back. Pokemon's already figured out perfection.